Hello, this is Bill Morgan, president of Parker University, and here, here with me is Dr. Stu McGill. And right now we're, we're talking a little bit about the elasticity of the vertebral body. And in our discussions, we've, we've talked about, you know, and, and so many people talk about the, the lumbar disc or this intervertebral disc being a shock absorber when it, when it possibly is just a, not just, but is a shock or a, a force redistributor. Make sure it distributes the force evenly where the vertebral bodies actually have some elasticity to it, where they shock absorb. Is that true, Dr. McGill? I didn't believe it before, but I absolutely believe it to be true now. I'm gonna go back to 1982, and I was in a lecture uh, by Harry Farfan, who wrote Mechanical Low Back Pain. Oh Wonderful, goodness. I got another story about Harry that, that is, is quite fascinating as well. But Harry, he had a voice like James Earl Jones, and you would think, you were listening to God with <laughs> So it was, it was very, very interesting. But Harry said, the intervertebral disc is not the shock absorber in the spine, it is the vertebral body. Now, I was a younger professor, I was, I was a PhD student at that time, and I thought he was nuts. But I've come to learn he's absolutely uh, correct. So, how does it work? The disc is filled with a gel, which is incompressible hydraulic fluid. You can't compress it. So when you squeeze a disc, the incompressible hydraulic fluid pressurizes. Now, what I suggest you do if you want to get educated on, on this aspect of spine mechanics is go to your local deer hunter or moose hunter and ask for a vertebra, and then squeeze the vertebra end to end, and you'll actually feel some elasticity through the cartilaginous end plates, top and bottom. No question, the barrel, the sides of the barrel of the vertebra are cortical bone, very rigid, but the top and bottom of the ver uh, barrel are quite flexible uh, cartilage. And what happens when you squeeze the uh, uh, vertebra together, the disc, there's actually more movement going up into the vertebral body. So the disc gets pressurized and bows up the end plates. But that's, core, that, that's bone, how does that happen? These are actually trabeculae that act like leaf springs. So we have a top and the bottom with leaf springs of trabeculae and they bow like this. And that's where the elasticity comes from. But now is the interesting part of the story. If you look at the shock absorber on your motorbike or your car, it's a coil spring or a leaf spring, that's the, that's the elastic part, but the viscous part is there is a plunger or like a piston inside a cylinder and the head of the cylinder has small holes and it's filled up with oil or a fluid. And so now, like a hypodermic needle, if you want to think of it that way, the uh, head goes through the cylinder and the fluid flow flows through the small holes in the top of the cylinder. So that's the viscous part. So the elastic part determines the length of the travel, the viscous part determines the speed, and that is the shock absorber that is tuned in your car suspension, whether it's very stiff or very compliant. Your spine tunes it exactly the same. So the elastic part are the vertical trabeculae, which bow like this, the viscous part is the vertebral body is filled with blood. Now the blood has to go through small openings, just like the holes in the top of the cylinder in your car. The uh, vertebra, the, the arteries and uh, veins come through this posterior sinus that we see here. And as the vertebral body pressurizes, the blood pressurizes inside there and squirts back out through the arteries and veins. Now, everybody knows that the veins of your body have valves to prevent backflow. Well, in fact, if you read the best anatomy books, they will show you the only veins that violate that in the whole body are the vertebral veins. They are valveless, which allows the blood to flow out through the controlled holes to give the viscosity and the shock absorption. Now, if the, sh if the load is too violent, uh, say someone has jumped out of a building and they're landing on concrete, 
the pressure builds up so quickly in there, it doesn't have time to exit through the sinus. The, we have a pressure vessel explosion, which we know as a catastrophic burst fracture of the vertebra. So it's always a high energy compressive uh, load. But that is the shock absorption um, uh, mechanism that uh, Harry Farfan alluded to. How he knew that, I don't know, but that's exactly what our series of studies in putting this together over the years has shown is exactly the process. And then when we watch it on video fluoroscopy, that's uh, what you see as well. There's more deformation in the end plates than there is in the disc until the disc loses its ability to contain the pressure. So you were very correct when you said the disc nucleus redistributes the pressure and takes out what an engineer would call a stress riser. It keeps evenness, if you like, to the uh, forces applied to the vertebra. But as it becomes so-called degenerated or you lose the ability to contain pressure, uh, now that whole shock absorption mechanism is uh, compromised and uh, lots of other things start happening. There's more load going to the facet joints, so we see a clean young facet on this side, and there is one now that's getting a lot of bone growth and uh, that gnarliness is creating, as you can see, all kinds of sticky oh. points that's going to be, uh, if it was in a knee, it'd be very clear <laughs> why it's a pain generator, but because it's in a, a spine, it eludes some people. Now we've got a video we're gonna show right now, and in, in this, it's in your laboratory, it's showing intervertebral seg or vertebra being compressed, and we see the, the elasticity of the vertebra and a retropulsion of the blood. Now. Can you explain what's going on here in this video that we're showing? Yes, we're compressing uh, the vertebra. There's a disc on, t on top and the bottom that's being pressurized, and it's just showing how the blood inside the vessel of the vertebra uh, is being pressurized, and it squirts out the vertebral and uh, arterial uh, sinuses. Uh, but it's being squirted out at a controlled rate, giving the viscous part of the shock absorbing mechanism. Wonderful. Now here's a, here's a schematic showing the epidural plexus in the vertebral bodies and kind of showing what happens when a compressive force is loaded on the, on the vertebra. And you can see the retropulsion, how the mechanism for retropulsion of blood back to the valveless epidural plexus of the spine. So it's a fascinating um, nuance of, of uh, spinal mechanics. It, it, it is, and I know you drew that one years ago, Bill, and I've used it ever since, but I, I don't worry, I give you full credit no. for it. That's all right. <laughs> I learned it all from you. Thank you so much for sharing this tidbit of knowledge about spinal mechanics. Well, Bill, thanks so much for your friendship and uh, support over the years. It's been uh, uh, a relationship that I treasure very much. Great.